Hey, my name is Joey. Thanks for joining me on my page. You know, my goal of my page is to provide Christian leaders, church planners or pastors who are ministering and leading in hard places. And that's what we've been doing uh, here in Philadelphia for the last seven years. And I just wanted to share with you some of what I've learned over the last seven years. Planting a church in Philadelphia, we launched in 2014. And Philly is a hard place to start a church. And so just for the next couple minutes, I hope this helps you. I wanna share seven things I've learned in the last seven years of ministry here at the Block Church. Here's the first one. You can have church anywhere. I mean, you can have church in catering halls, in clubs, in classrooms. You can have church in bars, schools. I mean, you name it, we've probably had church in it, in a synagogue. Really, why we've learned this and why it's led us to this place is because venues and buildings have been our Achilles heel. And if you're planting in a hard place, sometimes venues and buildings are they feel impossible to come by. It has been the biggest challenge of our journey. So we made a decision early on and we keep making the decision today that we can have church anywhere. Certainly it comes with uh, its unique complications, especially being a multi-site church and trying to be one church in multiple locations, stream in messages and have similar continuity when it comes to look, feel, lighting. But we just feel like we can we can find a way to bring it down to its level based on the venue and the experience. So for instance, we have a location in a catering hall uh, with beautiful large ceilings and chandeliers. And we've got a location that that location is a, is a, is a larger location. And then we've got a location uh, in a theater uh, where it's very small. So you have two different type of venues. You've got one that fits 200 chairs, one that fits 80, making it sound and feel alike is a strategy uh, that we work towards with many a great people. And we just believe you can have church anywhere. That's one thing we've learned. Here's the second thing we've learned uh, is, is the culture you build is the church you get. The culture you build is the church you get. In other words, how do you want your church to act? It starts at the top. It starts with the staff. How do you want your staff to act often will lead towards how the church acts. And again, while it starts at the top, it really starts with me. If I expect people to be give, I need to be over the top generous. If we expect people to be tough, then we've got to be tough. And when we started this church, we made a decision. We're going to live in the city. Our family's going to live in the city. And it created a environment in which tons of people families moved into the neighborhood we were planting in because it's culture. It starts at the top. The culture you build is the church you get. And I think we have focused a lot on culture, attitude, our pursuit of what we're trying to accomplish. The name of our church, the Block Church, our tagline, revive every block. We wanna be over the top and passionate in regards to accomplishing that. And so much of it starts with culture. Here's number three, worrying worrying weakens worship. Worrying weakens worship. In other words, the less time worrying, more time being present. And early on in the church, I worried a lot and I missed moments. Earlier, early on in the church, I worried a lot. I spent a lot of time looking back, see who was not there instead of caring for, pastoring, who was. And I really do believe worrying weakens worship. It's about faith. It's about extending faith. I'm a work in progress, but the the less worrying we've done, the more fruitful, the more, more joyous our ministry has been and the better the culture of our volunteers, our teams, and our staff. Here's the fourth thing we've learned. We spell faith R-I-S-K, we spell faith risk. In other words, I sit in bed at night and I say to myself, I don't wanna be on the other side going, I wish I risked it. And that's my hope for you too, especially if you are 
doing church, doing ministry in a hard place, you'll wish you risked it. Because to be honest with you, the only way to gain ground, especially in hard soil, is to extend radical faith and take major risks. We're seven locations now, and uh, it, that didn't happen without risks. And wow, this doesn't make sense. This seems impossible, but we spell faith R-I-S-K. Here's number five. It's always seed season. In other words, you got to sow early and you got to sow often. It's always seed season. So early, so often. I can think about our second offering. Our second offering was $212. I said to God, we literally, this, this, is, this ain't going to work, God. But I remember as I was doing the banking early on, I wrote that first tithe check from our church. I I sent a check to a ministry for $25. I felt embarrassed by it, but I knew early on it was seed season and God has multiplied our budget, multiplied our savings. But I think so much of it has to do with always thinking it's seed season. So early, so often. Uh, Number six, uh, give the youth meaningful playing time. They are more connected to culture. And some of that is connected to risk by throwing a young person on stage, by throwing a youth uh, or a young staff member, a Gen Z, a a 20-year-old on the stage to talk, to lead an offering, to to lead a, a teaching, to preach part of the message. I mean, I've got a location pastor who's 24 years old, but I feel a heavy conviction to give the youth meaningful playing time because they're more connected to culture. And I want my church to stay young, which will allow us to stay relevant. And to clarify, we know the message doesn't change. That is what's relevant, the spirit of God. But connecting to culture and reaching unchurched and lost people has so much to do with giving the youth playing time and staying culturally relevant, of course, while not swaying from the message. All right, here's the last one. Number seven, know who you are. Know who you are. If you know who you are, you won't be bullied and you won't have to apologize for who you are. I've had to learn this and made a decision early on that this is our strategy. We're gonna multiply, we're gonna be aggressive, we're gonna be volunteer led, uh, or excuse me, volunteer heavy. Uh, We are going to uh, be spirit-led, passionate in pursuing his presence. We're going to have church anywhere. We're going to be radical. We're going to make decisions that are unorthodox. But I have to know who I am. I have to know the kind of preacher I am. I have to know the kind of leader I am. I have to know the kind of personality I am. And I have to be okay with it. And some people, we say that our ministry is for anyone, but it's not for everyone. And, 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 And so what I mean by that is, is, It's for anyone. Anyone can come. Anyone can be a part of it, but not everyone will want to be. And I got to be okay with who attaches to us, who doesn't like video teaching and who is okay with it. We're constantly teaching mission over preference. And I have had to learn to be okay with, okay, you're not a fit here. You're not a fit on the staff, not a fit on this team. When you know who you are, you won't be bullied into doing something outside of what God's asked you to do. So let me quickly review and just share with you the seven things that I've learned over the last seven years of ministry as we head into our eighth year as a multi-site ministry here in Philadelphia. Number one, you can have church anywhere. Number two, the culture you build is the church you get. Number three, worrying weakens worship. Number four, we spell faith R-I-S-K. Number five, it's always seed season. Number six, give the youth meaningful playing time. And number seven, know who you are so you don't get bullied. Hey, I hope that this helped you. Again, my goal with these teachings and this page is to care for and help leaders, especially who are leading in hard places. Come back for more.